sure you want to do this? I go into America to help our family. Hailed Jamaica's next big sprinting sensation. Rasta rocking tools are burning. So I make some money. You are a dangerous pup. No man can outrun the choices he makes. So, as I told you, my special guest this week is Storm Sarta. Wagwan Storm? Yeah, bless up all no, of you. No, we're here. Wagwan, Wagwan. Yo, um, I saw a trailer for a movie named Sprinter, and they yeah. said it's produced by Will and Jada Pinkett Smith. Yeah. Um, how did that come about, Storm? Well, you know, as as this thing says on the foot of your car, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a, a single step, right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, it really started with the, the, the idea, ultimately, of creating a story that took place in the world of track and field, but also creating a story that was a real modern Caribbean family, not this kind of extreme... Um, circumstances that we are kind of stereotyped as, as living or as the only exciting experience. I wanted to really show a modern Caribbean family as is dealing with what they deal with and coming of age in this very interesting time. And um, and uh, ultimately, you know, wanted to tell a story about a, bo a young boy who is trying to get back to his mother. Because at the time when I basically w had lost my mother and I was thinking, you know, imagine if we could work through these these thoughts and these feelings and and, work, and create a character that lost their mother but if they could only run fast enough or achieve some goal they could they could get back to her um and i think the universality of that story and the fact that um i've been you know working in athletics working um uh with for puma and with maxine walters who produces most of the commercials for Usain Bolt and working with Bolt for a long time and just having the opportunity that, that they would appear in the film. Just, so all I'm trying to say is that there were many things that came together at a certain time and I feel with, with Will and Jada and with Overbrook, they were looking to put their, their energy behind um, more independent new voices, you know, real indie cinema, you know? Um, so so how, that, did you, how did you get to reach yeah. them? Were you familiar with them before i mean or they just you know saw storm as the big man and be like yo let me do this film with him <laughs> no, i don't i don't think so i mean it, it's all about connections um you know my first film better must come did get um a release in the u.s oh was, I'm, I'm in that yeah, i know i know i was gonna, I was gonna segue <laughs> into that <laughs> but um i believe if you wanted to know if you heard about my name or saw a script or something you you could there's a reference point you know what i mean um and uh and but also the, the main ingredient was Rob Mailer, who is the producer of the film, one of the producers of the film, and uh, we really got together and and you know kind of got to the final point of, of the script that we wanted to make. And he had a relationship with Overbrook that he had been developing for a time and had been working um, on some of their projects, I believe, or advising and etc. So he basically had a direct line to folks there and was able to put the script in front of them and that's you know the rest is history basically wow that's wicked so let's let's take it back we, we actually yeah. started at the front but i wanted yeah. a flashback a little directing technique yeah um who is storm salt like where are you from how did you um get educated in the creative arts film in particular like yeah. tell us about that um well i was born on the west end of Negril, jamaica west Milan. um to a pretty large family, you know. By the way, Storm <laughs> is a white man. <laughs> Just for those who don't know, Jamaica has a lot of white people. <laughs> well, um, I guess in different places, I'm different things, you know. I don't know if I went to America, if they'd say the same thing. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's true. Um, but I, I grew up in Negril, and um, 
in a family of creatives and with very creative parents, Bertram and Greer and Salter. And they, you know, that world was very free. And um, it's me and especially my brother Niall, because we were two boys so close in age, we were kind of left to our own devices to run around and, and with all the neighborhood kids and getting adventures and go get lost in a mango bush and come out in some next little town over some next place and run boat and something about that it's almost like that kind of you know those adventure stories like peter pan or robinson you know like them kind of mm -hmm. you know we i kind of live that i live down the ocean as well um so i feel like i realize now when I tap into my imagination or, or know or imagine how to make like a, a sense of an atmosphere, there's something about how I lived my, my early childhood and the sense of freeness in thought and, and expression. I was always encouraged to be creative. Um, and I was creative from the jump. And I started were, were taking pictures. Were all the kids around you like this? Everybody. And my family is full of creative people. And half of my family are exclusively just, you know, in the creative industries at, at least, you know, like... Um, my sister Stephanie Salter is an author. She's just completed her fourth novel. Uh, my brother Niall is a, a filmmaker, you know, as well. Um, my brother Astro is a visual artist. Um, but even my other um, brothers and sisters, you know, are all like were fully in the creative world at, at some point in time, or singing, or designing, or you know, yeah. But this is not the norm for, for, for Jamaican families, the majority of Jamaican families, because mm -hmm. Jamaicans are known to tell their children to go into traditional mm -hmm. disciplines, like mm -hmm. go become a doctor or something. Yeah. First of all, are you really white? Like, what's your <laughs> ethnicity? <laughs> Who are you, really? <laughs> um, uh, and I appreciate the frankness. <laughs> um, but... No, I'm a, I mean, I'm a mixed up person, man. You know, mm -hmm. I have all kind of mixes. My parents are mixed. Their parents are mixed. Um, my family, you know, going back to all of my grandparents, except one was born in Jamaica. You know what I mean? One of my uh, grandparents, my dad's mom was born in St. Vincent. And I mean, in terms of racially or, or origin, I mean, I have obviously African blood, Portuguese white irish you know I, this is what i've been told i don't really know i don't think i think we're kind of past that we're getting past that in the caribbean not not in totality but we're also mixed our society and uh, is a mixed society we are like people are integrating and engaging that's been going back for a long time and not only you know not only culturally but the people who live here so for me obviously because um i look how i look i have a you know interesting perspective because people react differently to you that, you know that's I mean? really my question. Yeah. Um, is it that persons gave you your freedom to explore what you wanted from a, a cultural perspective um, because you were seen as the, the person who could do anything and, and mm. were other persons in your neighborhood afforded that kind of energy? I mean, I think that wasn't had nothing to do with how I looked. That was what I, when I was speaking of that earlier, it's that my parents created that environment for us and encouraged us in that direction i can't really say what other people's parents do for them you know um when i was in my neighborhood any you that was creative was doing it if we, we are working on a little song man a dj you know what i mean taking pictures i mean my f i did experimental film stuff in the grill working with people so i mean at the end of the day i think it's not a, it's not really about that um my, the work is what gets you there. It's what's got me there. It's definitely not been because of anything else. I think Jamaica and as much of the world is still dealing and battling with and coming to terms with, you know, racism and colorism and all those kind of what the history of things. So it's hard, you know, people see you and um, project their feelings upon you and in every circumstance, whether you look like me or look like somebody totally different, you get these projected thoughts. Depending on who's projecting, you know what I mean? Um, you get a different set of circumstances. So I am always sometimes surprised to see how surprised some Jamaicans are. Or even when I talk, people are like, yo, you talk like Jamaican. I'm like, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm not complaining. It's all good. I definitely recognize that I feel blessed and I definitely was privileged to have a family that did that didn't say no you have to come to one of these traditional things in fact they're artists my parents are hippies and you know <laughs> russ and you know out in the country you know on a pioneering kind of 
alternative life, you yeah. know, and that's where I came from, and that's what I credit for for my commend success. them for that because if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing now. Now, how did you get into mm. filmmaking? Um, it started. I'm just into art and and telling stories in in m- multiple mediums, you know. But filmmaking to me is is like the ultimate medium because it marries everything. You know, you can kind of use every form of expression in it if you want. Um, but for me, I was always just visually, I was like a visual artist from a long time, whether I was drawing stuff. But when I picked up a camera and uh, started to find compositions and I just was drawn, I just, something about telling a story in a single frame, you know, was something I was always pursuing. And I think that led to my interest in, in then telling stories visually in a moving frame as in cinematography. So when I went to film school, I actually went for cinematography and editing. I didn't do directing. Um, one of the reasons why was at the back of my mind, I could say, you know, pe- directing is not something you can really do. That's, that's it's, like, I don't want someone to tell me how they direct. You see me? I need to figure out how I do it. But if I have the, the tools, like the ability to, to, to understand and work the image and the ability to compose the story and editing, those are like the main things that if you have those skills as a director, then you really have the tools to, to do it yourself or understand exactly how to guide someone to do it um so i was really into cinematography i went i studied that and uh and i just directed and dp'd my own stuff always you know i've only recently started to work with other cinematographers um so you didn't the, you didn't have a, a, a desire to become a director when you went to school i did have a desire okay i think i definitely had a visual thing but i feel like i did know directing was it probably when i was a, a young teen you know maybe 13 14 i was like okay wow. the 13. Art it, yeah well i mean i went to film school i turned i think i turned 17 when film school started so i went to film school pretty Which early, school you went to? the los angeles film school oh, wow. yeah um, was that one of the ones that that, that paid to get in? No, <laughs> I, I didn't pay to get in. Um, so you're scotch free. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I paid. We paid the tuition, but I didn't. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> nothing beyond that. Um, but what was good about that school and what I appreciated because I hate. I, I honestly didn't like school at all. I hated. Sorry, I hated a strong word. I appreciated my high school years, but I really didn't like it. I was always rebellious and. I would make any excuse not to go. So, like, going back into a school structure, I was like, man, fuck, I don't really want to do this. But the thing about that school is it was extremely hands-on. They were really well-equipped. They had a lot of camera gear and editing facilities and all that stuff. And it was very much like, it was less take-forever learning theory and more like take up some cameras and shoot some projects and do some stuff. And it was when I actually started shooting stuff, I remember my first project was to illustrate, to create one of the, the seven deadly sins, basically. Um, and I thought about it, thought about it, thought about it, thought about it until it was like two days away. And I was like, fuck, I need to do something. And I chose Lost. And I just used, I can't really go into too much description, but use like very simple and kind of graphic and kind of experimental imagery to tell this story. And I, edit, and I also didn't really understand the editing at the time. I think there was something about, I, I don't know, big up to my editing teacher, but I don't think I really got you, how you explain shit. Um, but I was forced to edit this thing. And it was in the editing of this piece that I learned how to edit overnight. And the, the, the piece I just remember was like really, it was actually pretty good. And it had a really, it impacted, it was like one of the best pieces in the whole group. And that was kind of it. Like that moment, I was like, "Fuck, okay, I can really wheel these things and do something," you know. Um, so, so yeah, it was. It was that. That was really good for me because I came out of there with hands-on knowledge, and I was able to go onto sets and be a production assistant, working on music videos and other sets, and just learning how things run. Um, and what I really started to do. Well, I was always shooting stuff and I didn't have an outlet. So I started to like make these experimental music videos or experimental edits. I would think, because I love dub music. For me, dub is like the epitome, peak of like a moment in Jamaican creativity. You know what I mean? Of technology and experimentation and consciousness and everything coming together at a certain time. And I said, oh, I want to make like a, a visual dub. And I, I used to shoot all this footage around Jamaica and um created this, some some video pieces and actually ended up while i was trying to figure out becoming a filmmaker i became a video artist 
and was exhibiting work in galleries and you know like wow some museums and you know that kind of just happened um and ultimately you know it was a little bit of a journey to get back to like directing my first film because that journey took me like ac- across america you know i lived in l.a i um director x uh, was one of my mentors who encouraged me to move to new york to work with him i learned a lot with him and uh and ultimately moved to miami to write my first script um which was what which was not better must come so there's another script which is actually more related to even sprinter than better you know than better must come because it was a coming of age story um and uh and uh and then i actually to be honest was in america and thinking you know okay this is where i'm at i have these links you know i can work figure out how to work my way up the, the system here to, 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 to direct but then um I got had to renew a visa, right? So I came back to Jamaica to renew this RAS visa, and the thing just taking long. And then, of course, now I'm I'm like been in this world, and I I'm like understanding so much about mass visual language, and I've participated, I've directed second unit for X, I've done video art, I've like I have a certain point of view now, and like creative understanding. And when I was back here waiting this visa, I was just looking around like, yo. This is it. Story. This is where it needs Everywhere. to be. Why am I running back to America to try to tell one of their stories well when this is... I can tell my story and our story and, and the stories niche. that I know, you know? And But my goal has always been to, to have mass impact and to create art for the masses. You know, I want as many people to see the work as possible. And I feel like... And so my ultimate goal is to create very universal stories stories that can be appreciated by anyone anywhere and that people can see themselves in but that is very much wrapped in the Carib- in the caribbean whether you know it's caribbean people or caribbean spaces or caribbean people on their journey abroad um and, and interacting with the rest of the world um and that's not to say i wouldn't direct other work you know i direct commercials and i would direct be a director of high i would direct series and all that stuff but in terms of stuff i'm developing i am definitely trying to expand on the the, the the wider Caribbean story which is which is deep and powerful and in literature there's a lot of amazing literature that does document our journey and, and, and our, how we got to different places in the world and our impact and everything but cinematically that's where I want to be pushing in every direction and not you know so so when you got what's the first moment of success you got first of all um, I think it was just always, always a, a mission. But I feel like I always had, sm- I always had successes and 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 significant successes. I don't know. I wouldn't call them small successes, but in terms in terms of scale, like I, I, you know, whether my work got into certain gallery things, like I've showed work at Art Basel, I've showed work in different places, and I didn't. It was work that sometimes people look at. Typically, you might look at it and be like, "This is art." I remember I saw my first video piece to a to a big collector, and they like tried to like bullshit me and like tell me how you know not great it was, um, or like suggest it was promised but whatever. Then the next day they're like, "So how much is it, right?" <laughs> so I'm like, "How do I sell this fucking thing?" Negotiate, right? <laughs> is there are some tactics that might come with them. Want hit me with the low price, right? So I'm like, "How do I sell this thing?" It's not a photograph where you can control the print. It's a visual, and, and I can I can burn a thousand CDs. So how am I gonna sell one? And it's gonna mean something, and that even got my brain thinking about this whole concept of art and consumption and appreciation and yada yada yada. But I remember selling that, and it was of you know some work that was very experimental, very simple stuff I had done in you know like a very experimental experimental phase of my time, and little moments like that get, do add to you know you're like okay we have something and Your then confidence yeah. And then you know we did the we a, a group of us filmmakers, um, my brother Niall, Joel Burke, um, producer Paul Buckner. At the time, we were working on a number of short films, um, and my parents uh, also you know were a key. It's just to show you how much I have to give it up to my parents, yo, because you know they are two sons that decide they want to make films. And they're like, yeah, you want to make films? Well, air well. I think we need to have a film festival right? to figure out how to do a film festival and that's how behind us they are 
You know what I mean? That's why the film festival went to the grill. That's why it started in the grill. Oh, I didn't know that's that. That's why it was in the grill. That's the, Firefly. We, we are, um, yeah, and the, the festival was called the Flashpoint Film Festival. Flashpoint, yeah, yeah. Flashpoint. I'm yeah. mixing up Firefly with <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, that's exactly why. And it was on the west end of the grill for two years. And then it, it was also, then when we came close to Kingston, we went to Port Royal. And it was at that um, festival in Port Royal, I think in 2008, that I showed the f- a rough version of Better Must Come. Yeah, I was there. I right? Remember. I'm not. Yeah, that was kind of an experience. It was long, but I think everybody saw it was took so much work and it was so rough to even get to that point. But I think a lot of people, something happened that night. That was like a, a I think it was the environment, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's Port Royal. It's this nostalgic place. You're telling a retro story about yeah. about the seventies, um, the seventies, which is a, a kind of a pillaging era, yeah. and you're in the pillaging capital, capital of, of the world. world. Yeah. Um, so, so there was something that's connecting there with yeah. the cannons and all of that. Yeah, the pirate and, and spirit. It, yeah, <laughs> the, the pirate spirit work and persons connected to it beyond just the present time mm-hmm. and and beyond borders. So you would say Better Must Come is your most was your most successful. I think up that, to that point. I think yeah. I think up to that point. I think you know we we had we made short films. I got recognition. I I made video art, etc. But the real moment where people had to say, okay, something is happening here, is um when Better Must Come came, and then ultimately it took a while after that to get the final version of the film or to get the, the right version of the film, and then you know the film did go on to shake things up, and uh, you know it's still. It went on Netflix. Yeah, it was on Netflix. Um, you won a couple of awards. Won a few awards. And um, have a, you know, the, that film definitely has a real, you know, like a passionate following. Um, I feel like it's a film that a lot of more people are going to discover. A cult yeah. classic. Yeah, I think more people are going to discover that film. I think as my work gets further out there and as Caribbean cinema and the voice, you know, I, as people start to recognize this movement, um, they're obviously gonna 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 see the work, you know. And What's the movement exactly? The movement is just something that was destined to happen. There's we we all know what stories we hold and how powerful they are, and how beautiful our culture is, and how global and the fact that we can be not only tell great stories and create great work but we can be super successful at it we've we've it's been proven with our other with 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 music obviously and and we just know it we see it i mean people all over the world are tapping into our culture all the time to turn up their shit always there's a reason there's a reason motherfuckers are chatting patwa you know what i mean in them thing and there's a reason you know so so we are aware of that power and there are creatives and artists amongst us that are determined to to tell our own story there was a time not too long ago. Matter of fact, there was a guy called Joel Zwick that came to Jamaica and said Jamaicans should not tell their stories in patois mm-hmm. because that makes it an independent film. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 not independent. Mm-hmm. Uh, a foreign film yeah. instead of an international mm-hmm. film. Um, I had problems with that because not all stories can be told in certain languages and get the same feeling. What is your take on that sentiment by Joel Zwick? Yeah, that's kind of like... I I, I, I understand... Obviously, we're very aware of that thought, but I think that's a tight... That's an old algorithm. I'm not saying that the old ways... I don't mean to be ageist, but I'm not saying certain views aren't... haven't been proven at times. But things have changed, man. Some of the biggest audiences look at shows like Narcos. Oh, you know God. what I mean? They're watching it in Spanish subtitles. You kidding me? You know, once not once people are being, peop, those markets were always cut up and separated. And I think that might have even been a slightly by design to kind of maintain a certain dominance of a certain type of cinema that doesn't have English subtitles, right? Or at least dominating certain markets. But um, I think streaming is is doing its bit to change that and people look people want freshness and that's what we have that's the blood clot secret weapon is it's fresh you can mix and match they're remaking every friggin story that ever had success right it's not just because it's guaranteed good business it's also a little bit of a lack of ideas and that's why when a truly good idea comes along that's why when a get out comes along an idea that is simple simple to execute not relying heavily on 
flash and bang, but idea and uh, and like uh, execution and connecting to people's yeah. soul. Yes, and speaking know? to and being in the zeitgeist. And I keep that word keeps coming. That's really as artists, as these as an. Uh, you don't want to. You can't chase that zeitgeist because then you never get it. You have to kind of sense it, and you have to put things in line and build your story for years in advance just for it to hit at the right moment. I mean, to be honest, with Sprinter, I was pushing to try to have it ready for the 2016 Olympics. You know what I mean? That was my goal, and and that helped to drive us to like go, get it going. But at the same time, you know, it's okay because the story is 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 it's super bigger relevant Olympics. it's bigger than that and also even these issues that are it's addressing like issues of immigration and families that are separated um but kind of you know there's a whole way of life you know the barrel picnic situation you know and then you now there's this whole issue of immigration across north america across europe or the whole world the whole world is on the move you know what i mean or a lot of people in the world are on the move and a lot of people are afraid and a lot of propaganda is about. So the film is timely, isn't it? Me? Be- because it's telling a story about a normal, modern family dealing with the, the kind of the calamities and realities of the modern world. Instant fame. Um, Which are universal know, topics. Universal themes. We're all going through it. Everybody's going through it. Um, yeah. Does it have subtitles? It does at times, yeah. It does have subtitles at times. And we, we, to be honest, from a creative standpoint, I, I try to, I had confidence that, you know, if we kept it close to the line, it could, it could be uh, fully realistic from a Patois and just Jamaican language standpoint, but also enough that you could understand. And few audiences do understand, but then there are also audiences that, that don't. And I don't know if it's, you know, them, or they may, they may miss a few things. And sometimes in a story, you don't want to miss anything. It's all the subtleties. So we have subtitles. And look, the film, which first showed at the American Black Film Festival um, in 2018. And, you know, the film really, like, kind of just was a, a, it was a moment, you know. Then the film won multiple awards, <laughs> you know. Won Best Film Audience Award, Best Director. And I think that we kind of came out the gate with a bang there. But what it also did was indicated that, yo, this is not just a little niche thing. Like there, are, people are connecting to this in a different way. And I'm not saying it was a surprise. It was a hope. But the reality of it and how people react to it and how people are after the screenings, it's, you know, it's humbling and beautiful. But it's, it's like people are connecting to it in a real way. I For this film... It's not. It's about getting people to sit in the in the seat. If you, if you can get them through the door, I feel like it's an experience they're gonna they're gonna <laughs> yeah. really appreciate. So, so you're interested in building the the Caribbean film market and the creative industries, right? Yeah. What are some of the things you? One of the things I'm looking at is putting a a, a movie studio in Portland. Okay. It's a safe space. Um, and I think it will drive the economy. Plus, I'm from Portland, just like yeah, you yeah. from Negril. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Portland. Um, I think. Um, even the airport is nearby yeah. where, you know, small air, aircraft yeah. can come. Plus, Portland historically has a connection with Hollywood yeah. through Errol Flynn, of you course, know. Of course. Um, even um, the new James Bond movie will be filmed here. Yes, yes You know that. Yes, I know that. Um, so how do you suggest, uh, what are the things that you think would be good for the film industry on a whole mm-hmm. in Jamaica to put it on par with the other industries all over the world, the Nollywoods, even the Hollywoods, yeah. the, the the Bollywoods. What do you think we need right now mm-hmm. to get that going? I think um, prioritizing and creating a, an environment um, and making sure like investors are aware, educating investors on this fact that major success comes with the idea, the good idea. For my, my goal is not... It's not like I'm trying to create like just films for a, a very specific locked-in Caribbean market. My goal is to, to create films for the world, and we need to be making this work and sending it out to the world. We're sending it to the world audience, right? And what I feel like people need to do is, if we can create more structures to like, um, when we find young talent to build and like to funnel them into a system of developing themselves as filmmakers, whether it's film school or programs or, or more like recognition of the power. By by the the um 
Maybe the even from high school. Being. From high school, yeah, we should he have said, film in he high said school. said at yeah. 13, mm-hmm. you were thinking about this. <laughs> well, here it is. All the kids are filmmakers now because they're making films with their phone. Uh, exactly. Yo, we weren't training <laughs> how to make movies on our phones in the day. They're all doing that. I mean, even look at the... A perfect example is um, the lead actor in Sprinter, Dale Elliott. He's a certified yeah. Instagram star. Yeah, and is. that's how I discovered him, in fact, for the film was... Um, Someone, and he's hilarious. He's hilarious. Uh, yeah, you know. And here's a youth who kind of has created his his world by making these small funny videos. And then there's a whole group, you know. And then there's great ones like like. And then of course there's like there's major hypes of the world who are like so talented, right? And bring the audience to him. Right. So yeah. this this thing, I mean, it's not like oh we're gonna go into high school to teach kids. Out. The kids are already learning. They're already engaged. If you want a set of exciting youths for filmmaking, it's high school kids. No one's gonna be as excited as as them. That's true. So, I think film programming in Jamaican schools from the high school level would be major because, yeah, it would just be major. We're already creating. We're already creating at such a, a crazy pace. Um, I think w- one of the main things I think is the, the power of the idea. So don't just wait until someone is beating up themselves um, in a corner, um, taking years to write this great script. And getting everything together before you're like, okay, I'll, I want to give you some money and I want, you know, 50%, 70%. Or, it's like, no, that's a backwards way of looking at it. We need to facilitate the idea. I need to be able to, I can speak of myself, what would be good for me to have development funding for ideas and for people to recognize, for people to, to pitch an idea, people recognize, okay, this has power. Or we believe in the vision of this person because of we've seen what they've done and if they can just, right? And then putting money into development, you know what I mean? Finding, you know, funding and grants that will, that will support stuff from the, the treatment stage and, and, and then to the, the script stage. Because real breakout ses- success happens with, with good ideas. It's not like, oh, we had an idea, it was good, but because we got this new CGI, that's what made it a huge success. No, it's always the underlying, the bones and the, the, of the story that is the real success. And that's why you have these mega successful p- films, some of these breakout films, because the stories are so good. And, uh, and, and, if the, and if it's beautifully told cinematically, then that's just a, a, an addition. Um, because I would say, and we have so many amazing authors and writers, <laughs> but, be, you know, that's such a singular, your writing is on the page, is so singular. You... Author, they can get their true creative expression directly from their mind, like pretty much directly to their audience. With film, you have all these hoops and layers to go through and things that you may have to tone down or the ways of like find, making sure you have this type of talent and, you know, to like increase your chances of success. And you're always battling to kind of like keep the truth of your story. You see me? But if we could just have confidence in the pure brain, you know, of, in the pure idea, and put our money there at an the earlier stage, um, that would be major. What value, and that's a good point you just made, mm-hmm. what value do you put on the talent, mm-hmm. like us creating superstars? Yeah. Because in America, once Denzel is in a movie, yeah. even if it's trash, yeah. you're going to watch it because <laughs> yeah. cause we have superstars. Will Smith, same thing, because yeah. America learn and, and curate how to make superstars. Yeah, yeah. How do you think we can make some more superstars? Yeah. And, and increase the talent pool? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like the superstars are walking amongst us and we kind of recognize them before them even reach, you know? It's always someone who gets huge and you remember them from before and you're like, yeah, that was always going to happen. So for me, it's trying to create these opportunities and ultimately larger platforms for our actors, for example, to really show what they can do. You know, like... An actor like Kadeem Wilson, right? He's so freaking good yes, in sure. this. He's such a good actor. But in this film, he's just like, he's so great. He really steals every scene. And and, uh, and he's kind of a complex character. If, you know, you, you want to not like him, but you kind of do like him. And it's just like talent like that needs opportunity to, to shine and needs nuance and complex roles to play. And... Definitely, uh, there is value to working with already established international actors. I am just interested in uh, in always getting better and better and better at finding ways of having that work seamlessly where it doesn't in any way affect, you know, I mean, or detract. Um, that's my ultimate goal. And I feel like as I get closer and closer and, and the work gets further out there, 
you know, it's like you get people will come back to yes, let me let me appreciate the pure idea. So I feel like we I feel like we have there are a lot of Jamaican superstars. I mean, Buju is a Jamaican superstar. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Obviously. Obviously. Um, 45,000 yeah, people. Yeah. You know, Shaggy is a Jamaican superstar. Beanie, Bounty But Killer, they're not you know. actors. They're not actors, no. How do we make acting right. superstars? Because I don't know yeah. that we have superstars that are actors who you put them in a movie and immediately it's a box when office. When you become a hit. superstar actor, Denzel became great not because he's good looking. It's because he's played iconic roles. He's done it well. So we just give our actors roles, not some little side coming and set two lines, and that was your big Caribbean acting moment. No, give you, give you the character. Have you play that role that a Daniel Day Lewis played? A range of emotions. Yeah, that yeah. Or like play. a Leonardo DiCaprio played. Like, I don't need a Leonardo DiCaprio to play th- that. You know that role here. Let's find our person because they're here. You know, and there's there's actors that I that I love that I will, you know will always want to build with. You know, um, Chantal Jackson is amazing. I used to know? teach her, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, it, well, I taught her drama. Oh, oh, so. okay. <laughs> well, hey, I forget. I, I, yeah, I forget. you can take your props for sure. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I see her. <laughs> she's and doing her doing proud. Her she's doing her proud. She's doing her me. thing way yeah. beyond me because yeah. I, I taught her in high school. And you don't learn that no. those yeah. kind of complex <laughs> roles and creating realities in yeah. high school. But she's doing she's doing well, you yeah. know. She's phenomenal, you know, and then um other actors, you know, like uh Dennis Titus um was so great in this as well. Um Shakira South. I mean there's a lot of actors that have not had a ton of, of screen time. You know what I mean? Uh and I feel like we've we're introducing a whole new set group group of actors in this film. And I'm always looking for people, you know. I'm always trying to find that that person that can take it there, you know. Um, you know, obviously Sheldon Shepard is amazing. He's he's Wicked. everything. Everything he touches is he's just bomb. Right. No, him, right. she, him <laughs> shell it. Him and the shell of the thing. Him and, and Evie. Him and Evie. Evie. really creepy. Yeah, Evie. <laughs> and Evie is such a phenomenal. So like these, I'm always like, and you know what I'm interested in too. Not only features, but I'm interested in in series. And I'm developing a series mm. as well as, as my next feature. But um, I'm very interested in those because I want, I just, I don't want to just be one movie, one movie, one movie. There's a lot more projects to be made. And I want to work with a lot of actors, isn't it? Me? I want to work with a lot of actors. In fact, my next feature, which I'm um, developing, which is an adaptation um, of a novel by Marlon James called John Crow's Devil. It's a, uh, it's about two pe- preachers battling for a village, for the soul of a village, right? It's like they're, they're fighting a holy war for the soul of a village, right? In the 1950s. And uh, I, it's such a, a powerful work as all, everything Marlon writes is just fucking mind-blowing. Um, but it is also like an amazing space for actors. And I keep thinking, man, I just want to wor- create work on a project where I can like populate an entire village with all of the Jamaican faces and talents and people who have been in it and are you know that are good mm-hmm. you know what i mean and and uh i'm actually excited about it i'm excited about working with actors more like i've been i'm, I'm big on visuals and moving and stuff but like i want to dig in deeper with like pushing performance and being even a little bit more stylized with that and so i'm i definitely i'm excited about like what i do next and how I'm gonna kind of work with the talent, and I'm giving them stuff that I can really bite into because th- that's who people get attached to. You know, you're telling a story about characters. You know, and the deeper you can go into these characters, is the deeper we take people. You know, budget wise, um, to make a film in Jamaica, what are you looking at? Are we on par with Hollywood yet, or are we still at the five hundred thousand dollar films? Um, are we are we able to command higher prices from investors? Yeah, we are. We are for sure. Well, um, give me a ballpark figure of where we are now. I mean, it's this, this is the thing. I think that some of those walls are falling falling down. I mean, people can definitely see the potential. I don't think they have to cap it at five hundred thousand. We we're definitely making films um, in the millions, you know, and uh, and. At the end of the day, there's films that are made in other places for hundreds of thousands and achieve major success. Um, 
for me, I people the, the thing about budget is it's very you know something tangible that ever you know you always want to know like how much did that cost and then that's how you kind of gauge what it is the or, how, or the value. Mm-hmm. But that's not how you, that's not how film works, man. You, I'm not interested in spending one cent more than is absolutely necessary mm-hmm. to make the best story possible. Not a cent over. And if I can, even from the development stage, find ways to tell the story without having to sell it with throwing money at the situation, then that's what I'm going to do. Because not only is it good business, creative. certain story, it's creative. Certain stories require certain things. I, th- I believe in spending money on something if you can't tell a story another way. You know what I mean? That's when that's when it matters. Not because hey, let's shoot this thing. We could have shot it, you know this way, but let's overdo it with the camera tricks. And it's like, nah. We did that. That's a, that's a very and I'm happy you share that with me because recently I directed a, a an ad for BOJ, mm-hmm. and they didn't really have a budget, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so I said, yo, give me the budget you have, and we'll work it. And I decided to tell the story with a car. Yeah. As mm-hmm. in. Yeah. No, no talent. Oh, it's just a car driver. <laughs> I'm just gonna have the car drive around. You know, I shot it, add the graphics, edit it. You know, do some drone shots and so, put the music to it, the jingle to it. I woke up one morning, and saw the ad on Yahoo Finance. Oh, that's cool. That's wicked. <laughs> and I'm gonna play it on this episode. Yeah, yeah. It's on Yahoo Finance. Then I saw it on MSNBC. Then I saw it on a couple of the international Bloomberg yeah. saying, yo, this is the wickedest ad they've ever seen. <laughs> Pity they don't know it's a budget issue. Yeah. <laughs> and they really had to cut the script. And I just <laughs> cut and use what I have. I had a blue car. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm going to shoot this. I'm going to use a car to mm. travel around Jamaica and tell the story of commerce and urban life mm. and make the car have its own personality mm-hmm. <laughs> and put it out. So you, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. It's not all the time. I mean, you need the budget sometimes, yeah. you know. But it's not all the time that you you're gonna get the budget. But you still can tell the story, yeah. and it, it helps you. It helps me yeah. as a filmmaker because I do learn yeah. from you, Storm. I learned yeah. from you from back then, and I, I I just tell myself that yo, once I have the 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 feeling that it can work, mm-hmm. and and I'm gonna use the idea. If it don't work, I can do it again. But mm-hmm. but I feel like it could work. Even the DP. And the other people on set were like, what the fuck are you doing, JR? I yeah. said, watch what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, man, look, uh, if you want, if you desire something, man, you can, you know, that you can, manifestations are a real thing, you know. You just have to take, you know, as, I, as I've always said, you know, um, which is just a quote that means a lot to me, is if you um, take one step towards something, it will take two steps towards you, you see me, in, every, in any direction. Um, so it's like if you want to get it done, you'll find a way. And I feel like your param- if you're given parameters, it flex, it makes you flex your muscle. It, fl- it flex your creative muscle, and kind of re- can reroute a story or a way of executing a story. Um, and oh, that's a, that's a way of exercising. You know, that's not a bad thing. Because maybe if you know? had the budget, I would have put a whole bunch of dancing people in yeah, the video. Exactly, I would exactly. be doing a lot of music <laughs> videos. <laughs> and and y'all would, wouldn't play. And y'all wouldn't play. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You I, know? I, I circle man. Hey, a lot of times, this jaw works in a bridge. You know? yeah. That's how the thing goes. Sometimes, yeah. you know. Um, that's why, you know, as people, we always like me too. You know, I, I overthink everything, and sometimes you. Even when great things are happening, you're not even feeling g- great. But what I strive to do and what we should all try to do is keep that optimism about us because not only does it, you know, you can find ways of, of or trying to see the brighter side of a situation, it, you don't realize how it changes almost like your magnetic frequency. You know what I mean? And, and I've experienced it where I'm just down, 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 down and things go wrong. But then I've also found where I just kind of let it go and just say yo i'm going for it no matter what obstacles it might seem like is there and then all of a sudden to us everything is happening yeah i mean look it took a long time to to it took a while to write sprinter maybe not a long time because some scripts take really long um but once we we had the final version of the script we were pretty much greenlit I don't know, three months later and we're shooting f- maybe five months after finishing the script. So you might work on a script for years, taking forever, can't figure it out, second guessing, not uh, not sure, not putting the time. 
and thinking, <laughs> you know, it's just going to take long anyways. And if you just realize, Ross, if I had finished this a long time ago, maybe we would have been in the yep, can. Yep, you yep. know, so it's hard, but you have to push, you know. My, my last question is, um, mm-hmm. give your suggestion to young filmmakers who have an interest in filmmaking. How might they solicit funding? How may, might they get their connections? Um you took a different route, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but but what are some of the suggested ways that they could up their network and know some people so that they could get their stuff greenlit? Yeah. Um, you know, one of the best things we have going mm-hmm. right now or a great example that should be kind of built upon is the JAFTA Propeller Project. It's a Jamaica Film and Television Association. And uh, they have an annual... Um, project where folks uh, submit scripts, short film scripts, and are and it's judged. And uh, I think last time they had like they got fifty or more scripts, and ultimately you go through workshops, you go through, they go through rounds, and finally you know they choose I think five scripts and finance them. And so every year you have five new films by pretty much new directors, and uh, that's just one program. Obviously there could be more. But it's just an example of if you really have the chops, JAFTA, you know, it's a good route. And for example, there's films that have um, been made, like uh, this really amazing short film called Flight um, by Kia Moses. Um, and she has a co director, which I will have to, <laughs> her and her co director. Um, it's called Flight, and it's, it's, it's great. And it's been now winning a bunch of awards. Um, we were at the uh, Nouveau Regard Festival in Guadeloupe recently and Sprinter won Best Feature Film and Flight won the Best Short Film. So now it's like, okay, and the festival, now, you know, like Jamaican, these, out of this thing has come short work that is now going out there and winning. You see me? So I think creating more opportunities for the people who really have great ideas and are truly talented, uh, breaking on the barrier of um, funding. Because... You can fund a bad idea, you know. Someone can have a bad idea and go find the money for it and it's still a mm-hmm. bad idea. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the person mm-hmm. who's really good at it that we need to empower and push and encourage and get behind at the early stage because they're just going to get better. You know what I mean? I, I'm always getting better. I'm always becoming a better director and a more efficient director. You know what I mean? And it takes quicker to find a way to know what you want or to recognize a performance and how to push it in whatever direction. Um, but it, it, it starts... At the beginning, it starts at a small step. So um, I feel that's it. I know that there's conferences. I'm, I'm going to be speaking at an investor conference tomorrow morning um, as a guest of um, Jampro and the Film Commission. Uh, and that's going to be with uh, angel investors, banks, uh, private equity, and other investment. They're going to be the you know they're going to be there trying to hear how we do this business to maybe see how how they can get into it. So. I will say that it, there is a nice, I feel a nice energy in the air in Jamaica for like entrepreneurship and, and you, know, ups, you know, people finding new industries. There's definitely a want for it and there are groups to back it. And I think they'll back film. And, you know, with uh, Sprinter, we were able, we had some, you know, a bit of corporate support, you know. Flow was a, was a big sponsor. Um, and they, you know, they put their money where their mouth was. And um, it was, you know, great you know product placement etc puma was also a sponsor um grace kennedy was also a sponsor and i think like getting corporate sponsorship like real corporate support for product placement or some other avenues it's not been like they've not really done it done it done it like that but hopefully step by step we're Mm -hmm. creating that that understanding of how it works and and now you know you're seeing oh wow okay our, our brand is in this thing it's powerful it's it's going across the world so um, especially for series yeah yeah for series and also you know it's you know there's various budget levels i mean people are doing web series that are super great and this is web series dreaming whilst black right um it's a great web series right um i don't know how i have to ask the filmmaker how much he spends per episode but at the end of the day in the same way um Issa Rae had awkward black girl and then went on to develop that or develop a newer thing with Insecure with HBO and no, she's a superstar. It all starts with how good the idea is. And that's why I keep coming back to and that's the one thing that I want people listening to understand that it all starts with the idea. Um, 
and it's only when that idea when that idea is great you can make magic you can move mountains you see me um so if you it's like invest early in different ways and empower early so that we can really have an impact you know storm salter thank you so much this is the top form podcast